This is the 2024 GMC Sierra 2500 HD Denali. It's just a Denali. It's not a Denali Ultimate or anything like that. So yeah, less than $90,000 on the price tag. The exterior color is Summit White. It's going to have a brownstone and atmosphere interior. And in today's Vehicle Visionary video, we are going to try to answer the question, is this truck better than ever? The most common complaint I have received on my GMC Sierra 2500 HD videos over the years has been the fact that, at least in the last year or two, that the interior looked antiquated. Well, that's one of the areas where the biggest changes have taken place. You'll also find more horsepower and torque under the hood with the 6.6 liter Duramax diesel and the Allison 10 speed automatic transmission is now standard across all trim levels on these HD trucks. So let's dig in and find out if this truck is better than ever. No matter what your situation is, there is lighting all around the truck. If you're working after dark, you can see you have the lights built into the side view mirrors. These are power folding trailering mirrors. We'll look at the functionality in just a little bit as far as how all of that works. You'll have the lights right here as well as the turn signal indicators that are built in. And we're going to have LED daytime running lights and LED projector beam headlights, as well as a lot of chrome on this particular model, not only with the grill, but with the tow hooks, the lower bumper, all that stuff down here. This lower portion of the bumper features quite a bit of chrome. So if you like your chrome, well, that's a good thing. And let me go ahead and walk around the truck and we'll show you a little bit more on the lighting. Also passive entry only on the front doors. But what happens with that is when you have the remote on your person, which here is the remote, let you see what that looks like. It has everything you likely expect. And I know one of your favorite features right there, remote start. You can also lower the tailgate with that button. You also have the side steps right here, the power side steps that come out and deploy themselves automatically. And there actually is a way to make those stay out if you want to. I'll hopefully remember to show you how to do that in the infotainment screen. But honestly, if you want just a little bit of a hack for that, just don't close the door all the way and they'll stay out. But there is a way to make that happen, such as if you're washing the truck, which this truck has not been washed yet. And I'm about to do something in just a second here where that's going to be beneficial. Nobody will be able to gripe and moan in the comments about it because people do that. Imagine that people griping and complaining. Nice look on the taillights. As you can see, we're going to have the bumper step here. Nothing new, but those corner steps are very nice. And another light right here as far as helping out after dark. We'll also have the cab light up there and the LED in bed lighting. That is also very helpful. So we're going to walk around to the front of the truck to what I was referring to earlier. You might have seen it when we were up here just a minute ago. There is your front view camera and you might wonder what is that? Your truck may have this feature and you didn't even know it was there. Well, let me show you what that is. And you're about to find out why I say that nobody can complain because this truck literally just came in. And since it's pre-sold, I figured, you know what? I better go ahead and get my hands on this truck and go ahead and make the video while I have the opportunity. So that's why I have it, why it's not completely cleaned up yet. But here's the thing. I'm going to show you the front camera. Now, what I'm going to do is go over here. And this happens no matter if you have the camera up on the screen or not. When you run your windshield washer fluid like that, the front camera washer is activated at the same time, whether it's on the screen or whether it's not. That's how that works. And I have actually had people gripe and moan in the comments and complain because they have nothing better to do with their time, right? About the fact that I just made a mess of the front grill, but since this truck hasn't been cleaned yet, well, they won't be able to do that. And you do have the animated lights that will animate depending on when you're walking up to the vehicle, they'll do that. They're going to animate right now because I just unlocked the vehicle, but they'll also do that when you're walking up to the vehicle, which since I've been standing here for a while with the remote, well, that isn't going to happen. And with changes under the hood for the 6.6 .6 liter diesel option, what exactly are the new numbers horsepower and torque wise? Let's open the hood and we'll talk about that. And by the way, for those who are wondering, yes, this area is functional. 
You know what's under the hood because I've already told you, plus you had the badging right here. What about the numbers? 470 horsepower and a very strong 975 pounds-feet of torque. Now, I know some people might say, well, that's not best in class as far as the torque numbers go. Most people are not going to maximize or max that out. But here is the thing. That torque is going to be useful at all speeds. And there's so many changes here to the engine, to the cylinder heads, to the valve train. A lot of things that help this engine to be better for the 2024 model year and help it to make more horsepower and be able to handle the torque and handle all of what it's putting down to the ground. And like I said, you're going to have that 10-speed Allison automatic transmission. And yes, this truck is four-wheel drive. And how about tire and wheel size? The width is so much, there is no way I can get my hand all the way across there. 275 on the width. The sidewall is a 65 series. It's going to be wrapped around a soon-to-be-cleaned 20-inch wheel. If you want to tow with this particular model of truck, you can tow up to 22,500 pounds. And if you're saying to yourself, that's not enough, step up to the 3,500 and its max towing capacity is 36,000 pounds when properly equipped. The truck does feature the bumper steps, which I think are very nice. They're deep. They're wide, plenty of area for sure-footedness, and you have the Multi-Pro tailgate for those who may not be familiar with exactly what that is. Well, let's go over that real quick. I apologize for those of you who already know. So the Multi-Pro tailgate obviously works like your conventional style tailgate, but there's a lot more going on here than that. So we can lower this portion right here. You can use that as a table as needed. You can also raise this section up. All I did is push on that button right there and that allows me to do that. This is bed extender number one. So you can use it in that respect as a bed extender. And then to we'll close this, we're gonna open the tailgate back up into its conventional position and we will reveal bed extender position number two. As you can see, I hate to sound like an infomercial, but I don't have much of a choice. But that's not all. <laughs> You've got to get that out of the way. It is also a step. And the big advantage here compared to the Ford trucks that have the built-in tailgate step is that this is much wider. So it works well. It has the sure-footedness of the graphite material or really what reminds me of grip tape on a skateboard from back when I was a little kid when that was a big deal. And I don't think it's really necessary. Maybe for some people it might be more useful than others, but you do have the ability to use the handle right there to get in and out of the bed. I'll just use it just for convenience purposes. I guess it is better when you have a taller truck. On the 1500s, I don't think it's necessary. And obviously, everything is ready to go for setting up everything you need to haul a gooseneck or a fifth wheel. And I mean everything is here. We'll take a quick look here. One thing I like about this is that I can close that step up and it makes it a little bit easier to reach a little further into the bed with the spray-in bed liner. You can see what all we have right here. And over on this side, we're going to have the power outlet. And there are three tie-down points on the front and the rear back here of the bed on both sides for a total of 12 there's a lot going on here. You also have the power sliding rear window right there. So now that we've covered the exterior of the truck in a light manner, yes, we could go into a lot more detail, but I don't want to use up your entire day. Let's take a look at the interior. We're going to have the nice large door bins, soft touch materials right here. Give it the armrest test, and that says, yes, that is nice and soft. And some of the functionality that was already here, this is nothing new, but you still have the under seat storage right there. You can obviously fold the seat cushions up. You also have the in seat storage. I really like that. That has a lot of versatility as far as what that can potentially do. The seat back pockets for more storage capacity. And we're also going to have the cup holders as well as the air conditioning vents. Here are the controls for heated seats and the power or excuse me usb connectivity right there depending on who needs to use that and as if two cup holders are not enough plus you basically have a couple of cup holders or bottle holders there within the door bins 
you have more cup holders right here within the fold down armrest. Nobody in this truck will go thirsty. And a conventional size sunroof, I am a little surprised that there's not a panoramic here. What do you think about that? Would you like to have the panoramic or maybe you're like me and would rather have no sunroof at all? And we'll take a look in through the passenger side door into the front seating area. You can see the nice large door bin here, a couple of different options for bottle holders, basically the same setup for the most part of what we saw on the rear doors. And we'll find the floor mats here with the GMC logo, the Denali logo on the door sill, power seats for the driver and the passenger. Now these will not have the massage function, but obviously that is an option that is available. The Denali logo is embroidered into the rear of the seats, as you can see right there, or into the seats themselves, and a lot of storage space within the upper and the lower glove box, even a little bit of space right here on the side of the center console here in the front area. So I'll grab the door handle that makes it super easy to hop into the interior and we'll take a look at what we have here with all of our one touch buttons. No real changes where that is concerned, but you can see that. Now you might wonder, where's the wireless phone charger? You do have the USB connectivity right here, and I probably don't have to tell you too much about what is there, but let me show you something here. You're gonna deposit your phone right there. That is the wireless phone charger. And because I don't have the ignition on right now, you can't see the phone actually come on, but that's where it goes. There you go. That's your wireless phone charger. In case you were wondering about that, you will have additional connectivity options with USB and a power outlet right here. Here's a little tray that you can use for whatever you want to or leave that out and have easier access to a very plentiful amount of space within the center console. The lid of the center console looks very nice. And you can see what all we have here as far as the Denali logo and everything goes right there. You can put your arm up there because the lid doubles as an armrest. That is helpful. The controls for the sunroof functionality right there and the vanity mirror as well. Take a look at that. Going to have the lights right there. And what about how far back the sun visor goes? It completely blocks the sun out if it's on the side of the vehicle whether it's here on the passenger side or over there on the driver's side. In fact, before we hop over there to the driver's side, let me just give you a quick look across at this newly redesigned interior as far as what it looks like. We do have the 13.4 inch infotainment screen and the digital dash is 13.2 inches in size. And I likely don't have to tell you too much about what we have over here on the driver's side door. You will find one thing that is definitely different from the passenger side, and that is seat memory, two different settings. And then these two buttons right here are gonna control the functionality of the side view mirrors. So if you want to extend the towing mirrors out, that's this center button right here. We'll extend those back in or bring those back in. And then I'll hit the button right here on the right-hand side. That's going to fold the mirrors in. And obviously we can hit that feature or that button and have them fold back out. You can see your blind spot monitoring there as well. And you'll notice a difference here in the location of the drive mode selector and everything for controlling the functionality of the lighting on the vehicle, whether it's headlights and taillights or the other lighting I showed you earlier. So they're side by side now instead of being on top of each other or vertical as they were in the past. This truck does have the head up display as you can see, all of the functionality is controlled right there. And the automatic high beams, if your automatic high beams are not working or you want to turn them off, here is the button for that. Now we'll hop on inside here and take a look at everything, including that head up display. Hopefully I can give you a good view of that. And you got a little bit of a view earlier of the animated graphics that are on the dashboard right here, just so you can see that. Some people really like that. Some people don't really care. Yeah, just whatever the case is, is whatever the case is for different people. But I just am here to show you what is here. So let's see here if I can get the head up display to show up for me where you can see that. I think we need to brighten that up some is the trick here. So hopefully you can see that okay. I'm trying to get it in a position where you can. Obviously you can go through a lot of different settings here. Kind of hard to see, but trust me, it's there. <laughs> it does a really good job, nice and bright. You can see what you have here. 
as far as the truck goes, in fact, let's talk about driving modes. What all do we have here? We have off-road mode, we have normal, and that's it. But just in case you were wondering about those, well, that's what you have. Here is your digital dash as far as everything goes and what you can do right here. You can go through a lot of information and all I'm doing is scrolling with the wheel right here. Nothing new for 2024 where that is concerned, but you can see what's there and hopefully they'll check the tire pressure on this truck when they run it through the inspection process after I take it back to the dealership. But you can see what all is here. There's a lot going on, a lot of changes, a lot of updates, a lot of things that really make this truck, in my opinion, better than it's ever been. One thing that I think a lot of you will like, on the 1500s, if you get the Denali or the Denali Ultimate, you're gonna have the shifter down here. And I know a lot of people don't like that. So here you have the more truck-like, at least in my personal opinion, column shifter. And we do have the old school of sorts switch or, or dial right there the button for controlling, turning the radio on and off, and the dial for volume and all that good stuff. And we'll get into that 13.4 inch touchscreen I was telling you about earlier that we've seen a little bit of already, but we'll go through a little bit of this. And you have Google Assistant here that's all voice activated. I'm not gonna demonstrate that because apparently I tend to do that and set off a lot of the devices in your home, but you can do all of the, hey, you know what, and. You can even use interactive with your voice on maps. Uh, you don't have to digital or, or manually put anything in or anything like that. And you have a lot of great features here. Trailering, all that good stuff is right here. Very simple to navigate. I like the fact that it's as simple as it is. You can go into your settings and make a multitude of changes with the vehicle, with apps, whatever the case is, whatever you want to do. You can turn rear seat minder off, you can turn buckle to drive off or on, depending on what you want to do. There's your collision mitigation, climate and air quality information is going to be right there. There's so much here that I could probably do a video solely on the infotainment screen. And we'll take a look at the cameras here. Had a little trouble earlier, had to deal with that, but we've got it fixed now. So here are the multiple camera views that you have on and around this truck so you can see pretty much anywhere you want to depending on what your situation is and what you need to see it just makes it so simple this truck is definitely doing better than ever but as you can see we're having a little trouble right there but you get the idea and i like what we have right here this area is meant to make it a little bit easier just kind of the rest your hand up there that kind of thing we're gonna have our dual zone climate control here. As you can see, simple to figure out. You do have the ventilated seats and the heated seats as well. We don't need heated for a long time to come. And you also have the heated steering wheel. Again, something I don't need right now, but it is here. There is so much here. We could make a super long video on this truck, including telling you about one more thing which is going to be the rear view camera mirror. And that can have a lot of advantages in that if you have somebody sitting in that middle seat in the back seat area, well, you're probably gonna have a hard time seeing around them and around their head if you have the conventional view of the rear view mirror in place. And that's where this comes in. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you're used to it, it's not a big deal at all. Okay, we're gonna get out on the road for a very quick test drive. I've said that in the past and it wasn't quick. It was three or four minutes. In this case, we're just driving down to the dealership. So real quick, what is it like to drive this truck? Not a lot of real changes where that's concerned from 2023 to 2024. These trucks are actually very enjoyable to drive. As far as the ride quality goes, well, it's an HD truck. What do you expect? It's not going to ride exactly like a Cadillac, but not exactly like a tank necessarily either. So you can do with that what you want. But the thing that's interesting here that makes the changes is the fact that you have so many more or so much more technology here than there was in the past. And while some of it is the same from 2023 and previous years, there's a lot of changes here. You can change just about anything, do just about anything you need to with Google Assistant and with everything that you have as far as all of that goes. This truck is enjoyable to drive. Getting around, no problem, pretty maneuverable. I mean, it does have some long wheelbase to it, even though this isn't the long bed version. 
But I would really say that unless you're pulling something that's obviously over the weight limit of what you're supposed to be able to pull with this truck, this is a great truck to drive. It will pull pretty much anything you want. One thing that I didn't show earlier in the video is the fact that you have the sticker on the driver's side door that gives, well, pretty much anything you can possibly want to know about this truck as far as information goes for towing. And that's pretty impressive. Something that GMC has had for a while, but not other trucks have that. It gives you the formula to figure out what you can tow based on the weight of the people that are in the truck, on what you're maybe hauling in the bed, all that kind of stuff. Pretty neat, pretty nifty, but I really like this truck high end, kind of a what you would call a luxury truck of sorts, but yet it's still a workhorse. So tell me what you think down in the comments section. Is the 2024 GMC Sierra 2500 HD better than ever? Obviously, this is one of the higher trim levels, so you can have a lot more features and functionality here. And for those of you who might say, you know, Tom, I really don't want to spend almost $90,000 on a an HD truck from GMC. What other options are there? Well, I have a video that I will try and remember to link down in the comments section that is from the HD Pro trim level with the double cab. That truck actually comes in under $60,000, in fact, around $55,000. And it still has all of the same look of 2023, but it is less expensive. So depending on your situation, that might work for you. So tell me what you think. Is this truck better than ever with all of the changes that have come for the 2024 model year? I look forward to reading your comments and seeing what your feedback is. I have to say a special thanks to my friends at Morgan Buick GMC for loaning me this truck for the day as this guy comes by to check it out real quick. And a special thanks for all of you for taking the time to watch and give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn about other vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now and I will see you there.